So hi there guys, welcome back to Sea Eye Fishing Guernsey. Uh, we can't get our fishing again because it's blowing a hoolie outside. So today I thought I'd take the time to show you my setup and uh, tactics for lure fishing. For bass, well, and wrasse as well. So hopefully uh, it can help you, if you're a beginner or new to bass fishing, uh, catch your first bass really. So I'll uh, go back to you in two seconds guys with the um, setup and the uh, things I use, I'll show you. So hi there guys, I'm just going to run you through um, the reel and the rod I use, just the beginners. A beginner's reel, nothing too expensive. We got our Sienna 4000 uh, reel, not too expensive for lure fishing if you're a beginner, because it's going to be getting bashed on the rocks and thrown down if you get a fish. So I don't really see the point in spending stupid amounts of money on a uh, reel, unless you're going to look after it. With me, that don't tend to happen. It gets put back in the car, doesn't really get washed down, so it's pointless really. But on the reel, some people, it depends really what you feel comfortable with. All I use is 20 uh, pound braid, green. You can get all sorts of different colors, green, because I, well, it's really what you uh, think is gonna work really. I choose green because you got greeny blue water. It blends in really, but you can get pinks, blues, and they all fish the same really, I think. It's uh, perseverance really. Again, it's only a small reel, you can, 4,000, perfect for the for bass fishing really, and wrasse to pull them out of the uh, cowp or wherever, really. So yeah, it's a nice reel as well, smooth. This one cost me about 30 pound, I think, and I've had it two years and it's still going, so I would say the money's not all. You could go and buy a reel for 150 quid and use one for 30 quid, and it might outlast it, really. It all depends, really. But uh, I'll uh, get back to you in a few seconds, guys, and I'll show you the rod. So there we go, guys, is the rod I tend to use when I go out. I use different kinds of uh, rods, but this one's the one with my uh, go-to rod. It's, um, I don't know if you can see that on there, guys. But I'll tell you anyway, it's an um, 11 foot um, Venerate Abu rod. Uh, 11 foot, some people might say it's a little bit too big for lure fishing, but when it's a windy day, I like to sort on that. If you've got a bigger lure, uh, to cast into the wind. It's got a bit more oomph for you to cast that up. Nine to 11 foot's an average rod, I'd say, for uh, lure fishing. I don't like anything smaller than that because you can't really cast the lure. If you've got a lightweighted lure and a small rod, you're not really going to cast it anywhere, really. More than that. Uh, let's get you the other... Uh, show you... Oh, the bend's perfect. So where you get a small fish in that, you're going to have a bit of play on it. So you don't want anything that's like a bamboo, really. It's pointless, really. There's no, point, there's no fun. You want something that's going to give you a bit of a fight, but it can handle, if you get a big, say a 10 pound bass or a six pound wrasse, it's going to be able to um, fight towards the fish. Because then otherwise you've got something that's too bendy, it's going to dive down to the cowp or the rocks and goodbye lure and goodbye uh, bass pretty much. So yeah, that's what I like to uh, use. 11 foot, perfect rod. And again, you want something that's light really as well, like this rod. It's quite heavy duty, really. I tend to like um, something that's a bit lighter, but uh, it does the job. But I'll be keeping my eye for something a bit, um, probably 10 foot or so, and maybe a bit lighter, I think, for in the summer more for like kayak fishing. And that's just what I'm now not doing. And on the boat, and that's if you're going to be holding the rod all day, you don't want something that's mega heavy because you're going to tire yourself out casting the reel. And you want something that's really easy to walk around with, you're hopping from rock to rock. Really? So yeah, that's the rod anyway, guys. Nice rod. I think this was about £75, I think. About a year or so. So yeah, it's a nice little rod. I so say you can see the name there if you want to uh, take a look on the internet for it. That's where I bought it off. So I say it's 11 foot. Let's tell you the uh, one foot I didn't tell you, actually. It's 20 to 60 gram. So again, some people might say it's a bit heavy duty, but you're gonna put on a big um, Savage Gear lead head lure on. That's probably 40 gram if you're casting to wind. So you've got the umph there kind of, and then you're bringing it through the tide. You don't want a uh, constant bend on the rod really when you're trying to bring the lure in to retrieve it. You want it quite still so you can actually feel um, it coming through the water. Another thing I didn't mention with the real braid line, hands down, I'd say it's the go-to um, line to use really. People say mono. I find mono's got far too much give in it. Braid is just straight to. You feel everything. It's a bit more expensive. For a uh, spool of braid, you're looking for a good spool of braid, 40 to 50 quid. I wouldn't really go for the cheap stuff really because 
if it's a windy day and you're casting a, say a popper, when you're reeling it on back onto the spool, it's coming on really loosely onto the spool. So when you go for that big cast, it's going to bunch together and crack and you're going to end up with a huge window. But braid, like people say, you can, again, it's all preference really. You can have a, well, I'll come onto it again when I set the rod up, guys. So we're going to uh, put the reel on the rod and everything. And I'll uh, show you the setup and everything. And what lure I prefer to uh, use for, uh, well, catching hopefully your first bass, guys. So I'll get back to you in two seconds. See how it guys. Show you a quick, simple as it gets. I said, it's beginners, guys, so I'll show you everything. So there we are, we got our reel. And as simple as sticking it in there. There we go. Beautiful. Make sure it's in so it matches up. Same as there, look. There we go, guys. See there. Make sure it's nice and tight so the reel can't move around. And then we're going to get our line. See there, it's an awkward one for lighting. And then, as you can see there, get your line. Bring it through the bail arm there. So it matches up, there we go, through the knuckle, okay? And the line comes through there, so it runs nice and smoothly. And then, simple as it gets, you can either, to let the um, line out, I've let the bail arm out, which you can do, or you can undo the drag, which I like to do. So you're not gonna have line flying all over the shop. And as simple as that, it's gonna stay nice and easy, it pulls up like that. So it's as simple as, here we go. I'll show you, there we are. Let's go through every eye. Get this for actually show more room. And again, go around to the rod. There we go, beautiful. Make sure every eye is lined up. So, like so. again all the way up to the top simple simple there we go there there we go and as simple as popping it through the top there guys Give yourself enough line. There we go. And again, each to their own really, what you use. I just go straight to the braid with the uh, clip swivel. I don't um, tend to use, people use, you can use fluorocarbon as a um, leader. I don't like to do that. You can, it's each to their own. Put in the comments if you do use a leader or not when you're bass fishing, but I don't. I just go straight to the braid line with my knot because I tend to, if you use, say, a 30 pound leader or so, or whatever you use, I find it could be a bit of a pain because if you're not the greatest at tying knots and you have a big, big bulky knot, the eyes are only small there, guys. That, and I've uh, seen people before go to cast an expensive lure, go on to whack it out, the knot's got caught in the eye, and next thing's the obvious thing, got caught, the tension of the lines snapped on the braid and they've lost their uh, expensive lure. But like I say, it's each of their own. You can use what you want, really. You can use a leader. It works fine. I've had bass up to uh, just under nine pound, going straight to the braid. You can use mono as well on the reel, but I find there's too much give in mono. It's uh, too stretchy. Braids, uh, there's nothing, no give. You can feel every little knock. If you touch a piece of seaweed, you know. You know when the fish is gonna hit. It's second to none braid. It's a bit more expensive. For a good uh, spool of braid, you're looking at 40, 50 pound, but it's well worth it, to be honest. Guys, I wouldn't go mono. And uh, another tip I'll give you at the end of each um, session, maybe put a three, four ounce lead on, bang it out as far as you can. And then, oh, I'll show you. When you're bringing it in, just uh, stick your hand like that as you're reeling to uh, one of the line that you can use and back on as tight as you can on the um, spool because next time you come out to go fishing you're gonna have your first cast guys and you're gonna 
end up with a dreaded wind knot, which is not fun because you're gonna have to start cutting all your line off and start again. Done it uh, before and I'll probably end up doing it again. But uh, yeah, that's a tip I can give you. Always wind your um, braid on at the end of the session as tight as you can back on the spool. So then it sits there nice and tight so it's all ready for you to uh, fish with next time, guys. And it's gonna show you as well. Now, now we've got that, got the line through the um, eyes. It's gonna show you clip swivels I like to use. There's two lots, really. You can, it's each to what they're uh, happy with using and what's worked, really. You got the bigger clips over there, guys. I used to use these more, but I don't tend to use them anymore. Well, you got the Berkeley um, ones. Oh, they are just uh, snap swivels, so the lower clips aren't easy. But uh, I used to, like I say, I used to use the bigger one, but I don't anymore because odds, again, the bass probably, they're just happy to go for the lure, but I would always be um, scared that the bass is going to see that and be uh, put off. Like the smaller Berkeley one, you can hardly see that beyond the lure really, guys. So it's each to their own, really. You can tie straight to the braid if you really want without a uh, clip swivel, but it's, with a clip swivel, it's so much easier, really. Just can. If you want to use, if you see bass on the surface, you can literally change over from, um, say, a surface lure, uh, surface lure, a diving lure, sorry, to a um, panchik or whatever surface lure you use, and straight up, just clip it on, bang, and off you go again. So that's, uh, yeah, that's another tip using the clip tool, so much easier than uh, just using the main line. And like I say, if you're looking at uh, getting them, they're uh, the Berkeley Easy and Clip, size 10s, up to 45 pounds. You got five in a packet. So they're, uh, yeah, well worth um, investing in. I'll just show you how they work as well, guys. So you know, that's a uh, beginner's guide. So you are, you got your layer like that. And then literally it is as easy as, there we are, get your clip. And, oh, there we go. Just a new one, it's a bit awkward to get on. So uh, say you want to get off quick, literally pop and off. Simple as that, simple as that. Bang, on, bang, off, easy. So, there we go. And again, gonna show you how I like to tie the uh, knot. Give you, uh, yourself uh, plenty of uh, line to do these because braids are nightmare to tie. And if you can see that guy's an awkward one, go through the um, eye of the clip swivel. You want to give yourself plenty, plenty of line here, guys. And then literally all it is, it's spin. People say six times, I like to do it. Between six and eight. And then you want to give yourself enough of an eye. So there we go. The lighting's useless in here. So you go back through the hole that you made <coughs> of the line. And it's literally in side the actual loop you've made one and then one more there we go and then get the tag from in the middle and this is literally as pull a little bit of saliva keeping both like that so you've got your knots hold on to the clip swivel and then pull it nice and tight so it all matches up and it's as simple as there we go, you see that? And you end up with a lovely knot like that. And then, because you've got the knot in the middle, it's, the chance of that slipping, guys, is, it's, I've, I've never um, had that knot fail for me yet. And I've said I've had fish just on, to not, uh, just on the nine pound on that knot. So to this day, I um, rely on it. You can use whatever knot you want, really. It's a uh, preference. I say it's beginners, guys, so I'm just showing you what I use and what might be helpful for you if you're just starting out bass fishing with lures. And then literally all it is is band the tag off that you got. Yeah, you might leave, you can leave a little bit, whatever you want. You see that guys, there we go. The line is not great in here, so bear with me. So there we are. You got your knot, beautiful, see, nice and sturdy. And then it's as simple as Getting your lure and your clip swivel, so banging it on. There we go, job done. All tied to the braid. 
and then that is literally you ready to go fishing guys and then i'll just give you a few tips what i've used for um bass fishing really i say beginners so uh places to fish i like to fish in uh well a tide coming up normally is a really good one for me from low tide up to high tide is normally when i've done best when people say you can you can catch bass whenever really over here in guernsey it's literally finding a mark uh it's preference really if the bass are there they're there but i like to fish in tide as well if you're just casting out into a beach with lures like i mean there's no movement in the water pff, the chance you find the bass are pretty slim really it's each there right you might find the odd bass but i like to look for cover boulders weed rocks tide gollies that's where the bass are going to be uh, looking for food really especially up gollies like people always say for cast and uh, uh cast a lot of people just cast blind now nah, the bass always come in really really close to the shoreline so if you've got rocks here guys and you're here you want to just literally cast the other side of it and bring it up the side of the rocks that's where the bass are going to be harboring the crabs sand eels or anything they're never you're not going to find them right you might find them in the middle of the bay but the chances are they're going to be really really close in guys and if you're looking another tip if you're looking for your first bass early morning sun just coming up by dark in sun coming up is a brilliant time for the bass because their predators uh ambushing their prey and um dusk as well night fishing but i wouldn't recommend going out if you're new to fishing going out on your own maybe go with another uh, person's experience if you don't want to be clambering over the rocks in the uh, dark on your own really but nighttime fishing that's produced some big big fish for me and in big uh, in quantities as well so daytime fishing you get the fish but uh not half as much as what you do in the dark or early morning so that's another tip i can give you guys um lures i'll show you a couple of my favorite lures that you might want to um try if you're new to fishing, just uh, quickly. So we've got the gravity stick, absolutely amazing lure. It's weedless, got a little bit on the back where the hooks, you can literally bring this through anything. The chance of losing it are literally really slim. I've had loads of bass on this. So that's a go-to lure if you're uh, new to bass fishing. Brilliant, you can get them off um, um, uh, veals on the internet. You can get them in big boxes, I think you can get them in, um, Packs of five, I think, actually. Might have some here. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Gravity sticks are off Fields website. They're amazing. Absolutely brilliant. And then, there we go. Got the Sidewinder Green Eel. This is what I've had my biggest bass on up to now. On the um, lures. Absolutely brilliant lure. Green, that's the colour to go by. Well, I go by. It's each of their own again, but I've always caught more bass on green lures because over here in Guernsey you've got so many sand eels so the bass love them and then I'll show you one more preferably well, actually maybe two <laughs> there we go we got a scary eel absolutely amazing there if you're struggling to find a bass guys ban this on and nine times out of ten if the bass are in that area they will nail the scary eel the movement in the tail is absolutely amazing I've had I reckon 85% of my bass on this lure. It outfishes literally any other lure I've used. So, and again, they come in uh, packs of three. You can get these off the internet. Just type in Sidewinder on the internet and you'll uh, find them. And there's one more I'll uh, show you. That's produced really well for me recently. And that's, uh, again, I'll put it in my last video, my lure videos. Check that one out as well. That's in there uh, on the videos. It's the um, Rapala Max Wrap. Absolutely brilliant lure perfect for fishing really shallow diving up to 30 40 centimeters ago so shallow diver top top lure and uh yeah that's about it really guys that's my beginner's tour of uh what i can show you really so uh hopefully uh you can put in the comments where you've actually caught a bass from some of my tips hopefully so uh yeah i'm just gonna pat the rod up guys and i'll be back to you in two seconds Guys, 
show you. There we go. That's the rod all ready to go for you for fishing. Again, what I like to, like to do is just put the uh, hook through the eye so it's not going to go anywhere and literally tighten up so it's all ready to go so you're not going to get hooked or anything like that. There we go, beautiful. You don't want to get a hook through your hand, so I've done it before and it's uh, not the greatest thing. So there we go. So hopefully that's been a um, beginner's uh, guide for you guys that you'll enjoy to watch. I said that's all it was. So I said the weather's been rubbish, so I thought I'd do uh, a um, lure fishing guide for you, what I use. Hopefully it's uh, helpful for you. And uh, yeah, pretty much that's about it really. So I so say coming up on the channel, there's plenty more to come. There'll be loads of fishing to come. I'm hoping to get out in the next couple of days, hopefully do some uh, lure fishing from the rocks. And then in the summertime, that's when it's really going to kick off. We'll be doing kayak fishing. By lure fishing from the kayak and all sorts of other fishing on there. We'll be going out on the boat, on my boat, uh, lure fishing, uh, bank fishing, reef fishing. We'll be doing more um, shore fishing, bait fishing, lure <laughs> fishing from the uh, shore. And we'll probably put some crab pots out on the um, boat as well. So stay tuned, guys. So there's going to be loads and loads of content to uh, come. It's been slow recently because the weather's been awful. So uh, yeah, well, if you've enjoyed the uh, video, guys, and it's been a uh, help to you, a uh, lot of your um, beginner's fishing guide. Uh, a like and a subscribe would be really, really appreciated. And uh, yeah, I will catch you next time, guys. And uh, it's been CI Fishing Guernsey. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.